In this video, we're going to be talking about a skill that is extremely important for you to master as you look to improve at the game. And that skill is visualization. What that means is noticing what squares and pieces your pieces see, what squares and pieces your opponent's pieces see, and ultimately looking ahead into the future, changing the position in your mind and bringing it back to the present to decide whether you should make a move or not. I've broken this video down into three parts. In the first, we'll have a basic intro to the squares and kind of how you should visualize the board. Then we will do a few visualization exercises. And in the last part, I'll do three examples from live games and ask you questions. It's gonna be a very interactive video. I encourage you to pause when I say pause and try to solve these things on your own. So, kicking things off here with the central starting position of the game, uh, with the coordinates on. White begins the game on one and two, black begins the game on seven and eight. The bottom right hand corner for both players is a light square. So if you have a chessboard at home and you like to practice, you should write on little tape or Sharpie if it doesn't have the coordinates already. It'll help you practice and visualize uh, the board in its entirety. When you play with black, as I clear out this board here, remember that on your left side you have H and on your right side you have A, right? So A, it goes A, B, C, D alphabetically and you count down as you look up the board. So eight, seven, six, five, four. If you flip it to White's perspective, things are a little bit wonky. On the left side, we have A. On the right side, we have H. And up the board, we count up. One, two, three, four, right? So you wanna start identifying the letter first and then going up or down and thinking of it that way. It takes time. Don't think it's a skill you're gonna master, but it's like reading a map. All of us have to do it at some point or another. Although now we have Google Maps and Waze and all these other apps, we don't actually have to do that stuff at all. Now let's try to put this into practice, okay? What this looks like, but before we do that, I am going to remove the coordinates from the board entirely. This is going to be one of the few videos I ever record where there's no coordinates. We're gonna have to figure them out together. So we're going to begin right here. And the rule is that we've got the white knight. On what square, by the way, if we're playing with the white pieces? A. B, six, B6, the knight's on B6. We need to rescue the knight from the territory that black is standing in and get to this square. There are two rules. Number one, we cannot get captured. Number two, we cannot capture anything. You can pause here, try to visualize how you would get to the E4 square. I'll give you a few seconds to do that, and then I'm going to kill the dead air with random nonsense, and then I'm going to spoil the answer like I am right now. You cannot go to any of these squares. <laughs> they are completely occupied. So the only free square you can go to is A4. And that is why the rule is you cannot take the rook. I said no captures. So it would be one, two, three, four, and five. And those are the only ways you avoid the enemy pieces controlling the squares, right? That is how you think about this. The rook controls all of this. Well, technically all the way down there. Uh, the queen... The bishop, they have their control as well. Fun, fun exercise uh, as a bonus. You can try to visualize how many total squares black controls in this position. It's an interesting debate uh, because squares obviously can be up for grabs by both. But this rook has five squares this way, nine, and five up, right? That's 14. This rook controls 14 squares. Of course, the queen will always control more than anybody else. One, two, and then you count all the diagonals, and this way, and this way, and this way. It's a lot of squares. Black very well could control more than half of the board in this position, which would be 32. For this next one, I want you to think about something else, okay? First of all, if we are playing with white, let's say we are playing white. We're looking at this from white's perspective. Where's the knight? What square is the knight on? B, two. A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the queen is on F5. Okay, now let me ask you this. Does the queen see A6 or is A6? Does the queen see A6? No. No, it does not. It does not. It would need, t it would need two turns to get there. Now, here's a little visualiza visualization exercise for you now. The knight wants to take the queen. How many squares is it going to take for that to happen? And how many routes to the queen do we have? 
Pause here if you'd like. I'm going to spoil it in five, four, three, two, three squares to take the queen. And uh, three paths to it. One, two, three. Okay. You also have this, this, this. So working backwards. And how do you get to this square? You don't have to go this way. You can also go this way. So that path for the knight, there's a few different ways you can get to that queen before chomping it from d6 or the e3 squares. That is d6, given it's on the sixth rank. And this is e3, given it's on the third. And this is how you practice this. The easiest way to learn visualization is to deconstruct. Get all the pieces off the board and set this up yourself. Literally, that's how you do it. Might sound boring, might sound impractical. You wanna get better at the game and stop hanging your pieces? Look at all of the little mental arrows that you can draw from the opponent's position. That is what you have to do. Draw these little arrows. Okay, draw them. How many squares does this queen see? It's a lot. I'm a little bit too lazy to count them on camera, but you can count them at home. How many squares? The queen is so powerful, right? The knight has to barely sneak up on the queen. And there's a few squares on this board the knight can never access, you know? Uh, for example, if we take this square, right? That square on c7. I'm not saying that we knight can't potentially access that square, but you gotta work backwards. Where would that knight have to come from? It certainly couldn't come from here, or here, or here, because the queen controls those squares, but it can come from... Can I get blue on here? Oh my god, that's amazing. But the blue squares, the knight could come from. Potentially, if we found a way to work backwards. Uh, although, uh, well, there you go, actually. Here, 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 here. So, c4, b6, a8, c7. And that is how you practice this, okay? I did say that for this middle part, we would do these basic visualization exercises. There are so many of these that you can practice. Uh, I, honestly, I set up a position and then say like how many turns it takes for the queen to capture every piece you know what i mean like set up a position like this where you 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 um you do an exercise where it's like okay the white queen has to take all the pieces in the minimum amount of moves and you can add more pieces and it will help you visualize this kind of a thing for the next three we're going to begin with situational exercises okay uh, if you've jumped ahead here as an advanced player, welcome. Uh, but we're going to try to kind of take a look and uh, make some decisions for ourselves. So, you're playing white here, okay? Position is uh, roughly equal. You both have two rooks. They have two rooks and a bishop. You have a bishop. You're down a pawn. Black has six pawns. You have five. Now, if you'd like to add a little bit of another layer to this, since you're playing with the white pieces, name every square your pieces are on. F1 g2, h3, and so on. So here's a visualization exercise. Should white play the move bishop c4 here? And he's saying, Levy, I have no idea. Please play the move on the board. I'm scared. What it, where is bishop c4? a, b, c, 4. I'm saying, should white play this move? You say, well, what does that move do? When you, when you practice, you better not move the, the pieces. You have to visualize this, right? And I'm going to tell you right now, if the bishop goes to c4, black will take it. Rook takes c4, which is a check on our king. The king takes back the rook. So now we have a position where the king is here, and the rook and the bishop are gone. They don't exist anymore. So if the king is here, and the bishop is gone, how can the black bishop check the king when it's on c4? Okay, again, you can pause if you'd like to try to slow this down a little bit. But if the, if the king is on c4, the black bishop can check us here and here. Because both of those moves attack the king. One of those moves is better than the other. The bishop attacking us on b5 attacks the king, and behind it is the rook. Because the bishop is gone. Remember, bishop c4, right? But... The rook protects the rook, right? Stay, bear with me. But there's another check. The bishop can go here. And when the bishop comes to c4, rook c4, king c4, and in this situation, we, we lose the bishop for the rook. But in this situation, we just straight up lose a rook. 
because the rook is not going to take. And that is how you visualize in live action gameplay. You play bishop c4, you think, should I play bishop c4? Wait, take, take, oh no, that's bad. That's what they're going to do. They're going to attack me. That wouldn't work. Here, white can play something else like rook e7, for example, which would attack the pawn. And the king would no longer hit the rook. For this next one, we're actually playing with the black pieces. Okay? Uh, we're in check, notice. So we're going to move our king as a first move to this square, which is what? If we're playing with black, A is on our right. Yes, we also have seven and eight, which means this is the sixth rank, sixth row of the position. So if this is the sixth row of the position, that means that the king just moved to, well, you could go from this direction, but obviously H, G, F, F6, king F6. White here plays the move A4, okay? Because that's A4. If we take, visualize, what do we stop protecting? The pawn used to protect the bishop, right? If we take, we lose the bishop. That won't be good. In this position, visualization exercise, how can black check white in two turns? How can black check white in two turns? Can't, no checks right now, but on the next move. And so in the game, black played rook e6. That's e6 because it's right, it's right next to f6, so it's e6. Threatening rook to e1, check. All right? And in the game, white said, well, I mean, yes, this is coming, but I'll just move. And played pawn takes b5, anticipating a recapture because now the bishop is under attack, right? The pawn is, is, is here, potentially hit. But what white missed is that here, black has checkmate in two moves. Now, you already know the first move. But when the king comes out to f2, the king, notice, cannot escape. Our pawn controls these two squares. So if these two squares are completely mined from the king, so is this one and so is this one. <laughs> that means the only square the king can survive on is on f2. Then the king's got nowhere to go and the king's obviously not going this way. So rook e1, king f2, rook f1. And a beautiful, classic right triangle, as Hikaru likes to say a lot. It's a check on the king. The king cannot go here because of the protection of the bishop, even though the bishop is under attack. And the pawns take away the squares. This game is won and lost by visualizing on the empty squares where our opponent cannot move to and what squares we control. So even though we were down material, we saw that we can go and attack the king, and the king didn't have an escape. This position would be vastly different if this pawn was here, okay? Because now these squares are no longer occupied for us and the king can escape and here white is playing for an endgame win. So it comes down to one square. And the, the, the reason I'm showing these practical examples is because I want you to think about this in a game setting. Oh, if I can prevent the king escaping, I'm gonna play f4, that's what I'm gonna do. A4, I'm going to play F4, and I'm going to lock the king's escape before I find this plan, working backwards as we've been doing throughout, uh, throughout this video. For this last one, this is the last visualization, kind of practical exercise that I have for you before we go. I want you to pause the video. Not, not yet. I haven't, I haven't told you what I want yet. In the area of the center of the board, what square on the board, what square on the board, does white, empty square, what square on the board does white control the most? It's a, it's a tough one. Very tough one. What square on the board does white control the most? Mental arrows. D5. White controls that with a pawn, a knight, and the bishop reinforcing the pawn from a distance. The bishop doesn't see the square, but through the pawn, it defends the d5 square. If the pawn were to ever take, it would be supported by the bishop. And by the way, for black, so it's the same it's corresponding square because pawn, knight, bishop. Now in this position, I've got a few prompts for you, okay? Three prompts for this one. Pause here on this next prompt. How can black pin white's knight to their queen? Visualize that. How can black pin white's knight to their queen. If you look around, how do you do that? 
queen g5. That visualizes that the knight is now pinned to the queen and... I mean, it, it can move, but again, that's just the prompt. I just want you to see the dynamics of the pieces on a full board setting, okay? For this next one, it's going to be a little bit easy, okay? How can black open the vision of their rook? The rook is stuck behind the spawn, but how can black open that? Let's see, Levy, that's very easy. Is it? Pawn takes pawn, okay? Yes, pawn takes pawn. Relatively simple. Now the rook stares all the way down there. Is it a good move? Not necessarily. But again, it's just the prompt. And for the last one, what is the best move here for black? <laughs> it's, a, it's a tactic. This is, a, this is actually a tactic, and at the end of this puzzle, you will be guaranteed that you win material. So the most forcing move here that black has, you gotta look at it from a hierarchy. Forcing moves are moves that our opponent has to react to. Check is the most important forcing move. We cannot check white. A capture is the second most important and forcing move, and we've only got one, and it's this, and we've already said it's not the best move. So then you go down to attack. Attacking the queen, the rooks, the knights, the bishops. The king is already up there. Check. You can attack this knight, and you visualize this from the standpoint of, but they just take me and I take back. Oh, but then they cannot take me again because my rook is protecting. Okay, but so what? Take, take, I attack the knight, the knight moves. Then what? Yeah, but now your pawn is here. And what happens if you push it one square forward? You fork the bishop and the knight, and the rook is protecting the pawn. So you are guaranteeing that you win material with this sequence. Now, the last thing that I want to reiterate before we end this video, a lot of things changed when these exchanges happened, and I want you to visualize that. Constantly be drawing mental arrows with your knights, bishops, queens, rooks, everything. In this case, the pieces are locked behind their own pieces, frankly. G takes, pawn takes, knight d5. When the pawn goes to f3, this bishop in all of these exchanges now has vision down the other side of the board. It used to not have this vision, right? When you push this pawn, you've opened the gates for this queen to have vision over here. It's not going to take, but if black ever made the mistake of taking here, black could get absolutely destroyed because they lose something on that side of the board. Meanwhile, this knight visualizes this pawn. It sees the pawn. It's not going to take it because the queen is going to take it, but that's how you have to think about visualization. And for these last few, I wanted to include more practical setting, how you would do this in the middle of a game. Uh, but overall, I hope this was a helpful video. Obviously, you've got to get it all the way down to the basics, right? The absolute basics, the squares, and how to constantly monitor them, even if you're a beginner. But it just, you, you, it just, you got to grab yourself <laughs> by the collar, you know, shake yourself a little bit, and force yourself to do the work. Blindfold chess, chess where you can't see the pieces as you play, it's a, it's a beautiful sight, but it all comes down to that. So, do that. Practice that, okay? I compel you. I have had so many people ask me to make videos on visualization. I finally did, and hopefully this is a good introduction of how to practice it, try to play with no coordinates, and maybe say pieces out loud, and you will get the hang of it. I promise and then solve puzzles the same exact way. It takes time, but uh, you will see the results if you put in the work. I'll see you in the next video.